So your book, Visualizing Data, came out in 2007? Yes. Is that right? Yep. So, and that was kind of ahead of the curve on some of this stuff. How, how, how has the field changed since then? What, what have so you seen? Yeah, it's interesting. The, um, I think it's one of the uh, most interesting things about the visualization work is that, um, so when I started doing, um, you know, doing academic work with this, you know, graduate school, things like that, so, uh, and started speaking about it, um, there was a lot of kind of, you know, this is data and there's this big data thing that's coming and this is, you know, like 98, 99, yeah. you know, and having to explain a lot of that and then, oh, and visualization is a way to solve it. And then um, sort of 2005-ish, that st around then it started turning into kind of people on, didn't need the introduction on the data part of it, mm -hmm. but they were kind of like, yeah, yeah, but what's the solution? like? Um, and now there's just uh, significantly a lot more awareness about it, you know, particularly with uh, when doing client work, we have to do spend a lot less time actually explaining like this is what we might do and this is what um, this is what's interesting about it, um, and that there's just more of a, a conversation about it. There have been um, things that made that that easier, um, and I think technology-wise, there's also some things that changed as far as you know, like JavaScript is now a, a really interesting uh, platform for developing things for the web, and I think a lot of the uh, a lot of it will kind of move in that direction, mm -hmm. and so. Um, you know, but that's much a much more specific kind of thing. Sure. Is it getting easier to create visualizations now? I think so. Although I think it it's really um, there's a ton of work to be done. Um, I think it's only easier because there uh, there's beginning to be more of a critical mass of people. You know, like that um, more students are learning about it in mm -hmm. you know in courses, and so therefore, like when they get out to um, you know, working at uh, firms or you know doing journalism work or whatever that there's a more of an awareness of it and they can you know actually do that. But by and large, I think we uh, it seems like we're kind of right around the corner from something that would really uh, move things along a bit. You know that I, I find myself still doing a lot of the same um, or fielding a lot of the same types of questions about mm -hmm. like how do I start working with data and how do I start looking at it and what are um, you know how do you identify interesting things and do I need to do code and or sure. do I not need to what you know and what level they need to be involved in mm -hmm. now one of the things that we cover a lot on radar is mm -hmm. the democratization of these tools mm -hmm. and the technologies yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. and one of the the counterpoints that often comes up is well if you put these tools in the wrong people's hands it can spread misinformation yeah uh, what's your take on that is when, I, and if we're talking about visualizations yeah, in particular yeah. is it is, is there a real threat there or do you feel that's over um, I actually think it's kind of funny because I, I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, uh, I think that the same argument has been made with any communication sure. or technological leap since right. the beginning of time and that, um, you know, I think the idea of having uh, books printed in mass probably had a simple, you know, a similar sort of reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of, you know, really pushing, uh, you know, pushing literacy into things like I think it's just, um, you know, that, well, if everybody, you know, the internet came along and so if, if everybody can actually post things on the internet then is that not the end of the world and right. um, the world didn't end you know in the meantime or you know anywhere in the last several hundred years um, and I think that the the important thing is to um, you know focus on that sort of literacy aspect of it so I think that the more that there's um, people doing the work that uh, hopefully even though there you know there might be some bad work that comes along then sure. um, you know, and of course there will be, but like, uh, I think it all kind of goes to helping improve the conversation about like, well, what is good or bad or useful or what's not? And, you know, just that, um, again, sort of this literacy thing of how do people understand it and, you know, evaluate what's, you know, what's useful about it and things like that. So um, I think it does, uh, uh, I think also that if, you know, for the people who are making the argument that, um, uh, you know that not everybody should be able to do this or that you know it's it's uh, dangerous and that that um, presumably those are people who are experts in the field or sort of, of doing analytics or you mm -hmm. know something like that and um, if you really wanted to like run with that point that um, you could actually I think argue that if those people were in fact uh, doing such a you know stellar job as they might perceive themselves to be, um, <laughs> then it wouldn't actually need to be sort of expanded out to a you know, sure. large, larger audience or that there wasn't, there wouldn't be something, 
gained by having a bunch of amateurs um, or people who start as amateurs actually jumping into it. Right. And so I think if you're going to kind of get into that, then you need to start Interesting. addressing what, you know. That, no, that's a good point. Know. I don't see that one raised very often. <laughs> so the last question I have for you, how do you see visualizations evolving over the next couple of years? Will visualization become its own yeah, discipline? So I think um, the big thing is that right now there's sort of a, a funny um, way of looking at things where it's it's um, like so I, I see visualization as being this sort of you know it's really ex an extension of a bunch of other visual communication things that came before it you know like I like um, to use cartography as a good example of kind of you know cartographers were doing all the same things with like dealing with a ridiculous amount of data and um, boiling that down into something that anybody could understand and was you know was clear and um, you don't necessarily see them Go themselves going around patting themselves on the back for like, well, I took this, you know, massive road atlas and turned it into something that anybody could actually read to get from point A to point B. Right. And like, um, so I think, uh, but sorry, to your, to your point, um, uh, I think the uh, real thing that's going to change is that we're going to start understanding that like visualization isn't this sort of uh, monolithic thing, you know, that it's not kind of you know, data plus image equals this, you know, this singular yeah. sort of field. And that um, I like to look at it a lot like uh, writing that, um, you know, you have uh, novels and poetry and haikus mm -hmm. and, you know, like there's lots of different mm -hmm. types of writing and styles of writing and ways that you address things. And I think the same thing happens in visualization that there's sort of this, um, you know, some things are uh, tools for doing analysis and some things are uh, purely entertainment and, um, that's not so much a spectrum as just you know different ways of um, different ways of addressing it. And mm -hmm. I think there's you know maybe half a dozen of those. You know the journalistic stuff is an, is another area. Um, and I think one of the things that we kind of get caught up in right now, even sort of within the visualization sphere, is that um, people uh, evaluate stuff that's uh, say for journalism or for you know pure entertainment or mm -hmm. something near it um, under the same rubric as you know, the way that you look at analytics tools and things like that. Right. So there's a recent, you know, so every once in a while you get people who are doing work kind of all sniping at each other about, you know, like, <laughs> well, it's not relevant. And you know, it's like, yeah, if you take it kind of completely out of its context, and, yeah. um, you know, then you can't, uh, you just need different different ways of evaluating things. And so, right. um, yeah, so I think like writing, it'll just kind of um, attach itself to a number of different things, but also I think, or I hope at least that we'll have a better understanding of um, you know the different roles that it can it can take, and uh, given different audiences or different uh, contexts in which it'll be used, and that sort of thing. Great. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it. All right.